the train moves to its own beat. The train moves to its own beat, now in fast steps, now slow, halts, then starts again, chugging along. It makes a sound loud enough to drown all other. People's talk, children's cry. The tea seller comes with his kettle and paper cups. I sit by my window, thinking, listening, and recording, even talking. There are people everywhere. Their bodies brush against the fluffy cap of my little recorder. I hold it closer. Burrowing through these lateral shafts of sound, the song of the blind singer is coming towards my mic. And I hear her voice long before I see her, like the wind that precedes a train in a tunnel, like Turner's engine. She seems to come from the past to meet my recorder, now in the present, and then she moves on.
Do you want to explain what you're doing right now? Uh, well, I'm copying John Barlow's collection, which is mostly classical music and old recordings. Is this the collection that came in recently? It came in the uh, day before. Uh -huh. And I think there's a deadline of another two, three days to finish this. Finish it. About 25 days. What are we listening to right now? Sarod? Uh, yeah, Sarod Jai Jai Who's playing it? Radhikamon. Oh, that's Radhikamon. Yeah, the whole car Oh, wonderful. An archive is a collection of ephemera surrounding a dead entity, a kind of altar calling for reincarnation. It preserves absence through the objects, gestures, and memorializations that act as metonymic equivalents of what has disappeared. Tracing loss or ruin, the archive attempts to recreate the original body through cynic thought, by assembling meanings through the accumulation of rubble, the relics of the things it imagines and invokes. It seizes the past and fixes it. What is found is what is exalted. Anchored in resurrection and recovery, in reverie, an archive becomes a tangible biography of remains. The archive haunts us the site of privation, fragments of enigma, the ghostly imprint of an insinuated forever future.
An archive is the fear of time's power. This is the Samavasarana. This is the Jina. This is the seated assembly. And this is the fourfold body of the Jina seated at the center. When the Jina finishes preaching the first sermon, and then, surrounded by disciples, moves on, the fantastical mandala shaped preaching hall disappears like a mirage, leaving not even a footprint 
where its vast assembly once sat listening to that otherworldly sound. It is abandoned. They leave not a single material trace, but later reappear in replicas by the thousand and thousand. Every theatre, every temple is a sum of asylum. Every lay worshipper a celestial in ancient attendance. Every image and icon a living absence. Lord. Nisi.